two desktop environments, right? One's been the Linux standard for decades, decades. The other launched its first alpha just over a year ago. Millions are asking the same question. Does the newcomer replace the veteran? System76 spent years building Cosmic from scratch in Rust after walking away from GNOME entirely. They cited extension instability and disagreements with GNOME developers as their breaking point. Meanwhile, GNOME 49 just shipped with modernized apps, HDR wallpaper support, and performance refinements from five years of optimization work. The question isn't which looks prettier. They're visually similar by design. The question? What happens when you actually use them daily? I mean, I don't know it yet, like... Coffee, spelled backwards, is EFOC. Which is funny, because until I've had my coffee, I don't give EFOC about anything. Same energy, buddy, because until I've studied this thing, I don't give EFOC about anything they say. So let's talk about what System76 promised versus what they shipped. Cosmic offers native window tiling without extensions, built-in window stacking that tabs apps together seamlessly, and per-workspace customization, where one workspace tiles and another floats. GNOME 49 counters with new default apps like Showtime Video Player and Papers Document Viewer, lock screen media controls, and that dynamic triple buffering breakthrough. Well, la, di, da. On paper, Cosmic sounds revolutionary. The Rust Foundation theoretically guarantees memory safety and speed advantages over GNOME's JavaScript-based architecture. But here's where it gets interesting. Early testers reported Cosmic consuming 1.2 gigabytes of RAM in virtual machines with 4 gigabyte configurations. Each panel applet allegedly uses 33 megabytes. 33! Individually. Users documented memory usage quadrupling over 3-hour sessions. One GitHub issue shows battery life halving. H halving compared to GNOME on identical hardware. Emotional, damn it! System76 has been optimizing aggressively. They cut text editor RAM usage in half during development. But GNOME 49 benefits from decades of refinement. The Files app? It loads large folders five times faster than GNOME 48. Scrolling through thumbnails? Ten times quicker. Then there's the stability conversation. Cosmic beta users encountered crashes, missing features like HDR support that won't arrive until after version 1 launches in December, and bugs with screen sharing performance through portals. GNOME 49.2 just fixed tiled monitor handling and sticky key issues. The kind of polish that comes from 28 years, 28 years of development. But let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something! Let me tell you something! <laughs> okay, sorry. Let me tell you something about which desktop wins. Look, if you want bleeding edge features and don't mind alpha stage instability, Cosmic delivers innovation. The Windows stacking alone is genuinely impressive, something Microsoft promised Windows users for years and never delivered. But if you need a desktop that works reliably today without memory leaks or battery drain, GNOME 49 remains the safer choice. Cosmic shows massive potential, but needs more time to match GNOME's stability and efficiency. The real winner? Anyone who appreciates competition pushing both projects forward. Just know what you're signing up for before making the switch. If this breakdown helped you decide, excellent. I compare what actually works versus marketing promises so you don't waste time on broken software. Seriously. Hey, Mark here. <clears throat> okay, look, I spend a lot of time investigating these products, and I'd rather not fill this channel with sponsored content from companies whose products I might roast next week. That would be awkward. If this review helped you out or saved you from wasting money, here's how you can support what we're doing. First, I've put the link to this product in the description. If you buy through my link, they toss me a few pennies without charging you extra. Win-win. Second, there's another link down there that goes straight to Amazon's homepage. Bookmark it and use it whenever you shop. Doesn't matter if you're buying this product or restocking on toilet paper. A tiny portion of what you're already spending helps fund these investigations. And trust me, Jeff Bezos won't even notice it's missing. It's the easiest way to support the channel without spending extra money. All right, that's it. Keep questioning everything, and I'll see you in the next investigation, where we figure out what's actually worth your money and what's just expensive garbage with good marketing. Stay savage out there.